hello, hello. You know, occasionally I like to step back a little bit from some of the technical tutorial content that we usually see here uh, and look at the big picture of game development and game design. And today I want to talk to you as a game designer about when and how you should make your prototypes look as good as possible. Maybe some of these tips will help you in the development process and cross your fingers, might get your game signed by a publisher. Let's go. Now, let's say that you are at a convention where you are testing with the general public and possibly publishers may be walking around too. First of all, don't feel pressured to make your prototype look pretty, especially if you're still in the early stages of development. If you take a look at some of my earliest prototypes, they're very bare bones, just black text on a white background, probably not even any clip art. Uh, and I am fortunate to work with a lot of other designers in my development process uh, in the Game Designers of North Carolina. If you can find playtesters who are willing to sit down with something that just looks kind of bad in general, uh, but, but still give you feedback uh, that is constructive about the actual gameplay part of the game, uh, then please hold on to those testers and, and take care of them because they are a rare breed. Um, if you're more sort of on the visual end of the spectrum, and, and understandably I am too, uh, then there is an impulse to make a prototype look really good as a way to explore the game design. And just be aware that though you may have put a lot of hours into making your prototype look really, really good, do not get too attached to it because ultimately what you want is to make a living at this. And that living generally comes from royalties those royalties come from sales. Those sales demand certain aesthetic choices that uh, the publisher will uh, consult with you on and ultimately be the probably the final uh, arbiter of, uh, depending on your contract terms. So just don't get too attached. If you are going to make a prototype that does look really, really good, um, take care in that you are setting an expectation that the game is more finished than it may actually be. Uh, and so that may result in some testers being reluctant to give you feedback that is constructive or that would lead to significant changes to the game. Though you may want to make your prototype look good, just be careful that you don't make it look finished. Emphasize that there are some aspects of the design that need to be revised and that though the game looks pretty nice as it is on the table, you are willing to hear feedback that may lead to significant changes. One last note of caution, and then I'll actually get to talking about how to make a prototype look good. Um, be aware that there's a habit, and I have this too, that uh, when you are away from testers and you're kind of sitting by yourself with your game, just kind of staring at it, uh, just kind of willing it to be better, it's easy to just get lost in the uh, minutia of setting up your visual assets, your, your card designs, your components, uh, even though the, the game itself, after those many hours of work, has not in itself fundamentally changed. All that said, let's get to talking about how to make your prototype look pretty good. Adequate. No, 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 really good. So first off, let's start from square one. Let's assume that you have no artistic assets available and you have uh, no access to any clip art or any kind of representational imagery. That is totally fine. You can get a lot of attention just by the use of very crisp, clear fields of bright, saturated colors. Uh, make sure that whatever text or anything you put on a field of color is very clearly legible, even if it were in black and white, especially if it were in black and white. If you do have color there, you want to have some other iconography that is color independent, but make sure that you're not using color exclusively as your primary means of conveying information about the game. That'll just save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Uh, now, this whole video is under the premise that you are selling to a publisher, and that publisher will almost never use your prototype images. Because of that, sometimes I like to uh, grab stills or um, movie screenshots. Uh, so say, for example, in a sci-fi game that I'm working on, I may use still shots from The Expanse or from like Star Trek, uh, things that are very clearly never going to actually be part of the, the final game, but they suggest to testers and uh, the publisher that I'm, uh, that I'm pitching to 
the the mood of the game, the the type of sci-fi flavor that I'm I'm uh, pursuing at that time. Uh, sometimes the game I'm working on doesn't really have any any real thematic anchor into one particular genre or or another. Uh, and as a result, I, I'm less tied to that kind of imagery. So for example, the early prototypes for Junk Orbit had very uh, bare bones, uh, flat black and white artwork for each of the pieces of space junk that you would be collecting. So where can you find images? Well, uh, search on Flickr.com and make sure that you're looking under the Creative Commons license. Uh, they're generally pretty good at filtering out artwork and images that are actually Creative Commons licensed, but again, just don't get too committed to that. Uh, it, it may not actually be the case. You may have more luck at other sites like pexels.com or pixabay.com, both of which advertise themselves as sources of royalty-free stock photos available under a free-for-commercial-use, no-attribution-required license. If you are in need of game icons, there is probably no better source than gameicons.net. Uh, there is a library of just thousands of different game icons in a variety of styles uh, for different styles of game. Boy oh boy, the customization tools they have available now are great if you don't really have any experience with something like Adobe Illustrator or any kind of vector editing program. So those are the free options. Now, if you actually want to spend a couple bucks, before I go into this, I want to be absolutely clear that if you spend any money making your prototype look good, that is cutting into what you will eventually make from it when you sell the game to, to a publisher and will also cut into potentially your royalties. If you're, if you're gonna pay for something, make sure it's something that can be used and remixed uh, regularly. Personally, I get a lot of use out of my Shutterstock subscription. I tend to focus on downloading vector assets that can be taken apart and remixed. Now, Shutterstock also has uh, digital illustrations uh, but if you don't have a lot of experience in Photoshop, uh, that allows you to kind of crop and reuse and extract certain things out of those pieces of art, they're going to be less useful to you than the vector assets, for example. Drive -through RPG has an amazing selection of fantasy character illustrations and some buildings and some other assets that you just won't find on the typical stock, uh, stock art site. There is another option too that if you're more familiar with the video game side of things you're already going to know this already. Try the Unity Store. Now the Unity Store is usually tailored for video game and digital game development which is not really our purview here. What we're focused on are the card game assets that they have available. Normally these would be for digital card games or mobile games but if you look in those uh, downloadables you'll find Photoshop files in there, PSDs. And within those layers, there are going to be smart object layers that if you edit the contents, uh, you'll find further layers that go deeper uh, into some of the nitty gritty stuff that comprise the backs and the fronts of these card game frames. Now, this is very intensive Photoshop stuff. So if you don't have Photoshop or if you're not feeling really experienced with it, uh, this may be a little bit intimidating, but sometimes it's just nice to have good looking card frames and card backs, regardless of whether you can do any significant editing to them. And last but not least, of course, my Patreon gives you all sorts of downloadable assets, including iconography, card frames, and of course, all the tutorials in this series to help you get started making your prototype as quickly and efficiently as possible. Maybe if you're lucky and you get someone's attention, you'll be able to sign your game with a publisher. So best of luck out there. Hopefully you can make your own prototypes look great and hope this helped. Hello, hello! Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to download more stuff and more content, uh, you can find it over in the Patreon at the link below. Thanks very much. Bye! Bye!